Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery! SDXL 1.0 is a great set of models for generating images and works brilliantly in Comfy UI. However, creating all those workflows can be a bit overwhelming. Thankfully, the community comes to the rescue and this new workflow combines many of your favourite things into a single compact interface. Text to image, image to image and image in painting are all available via an Operation Mode selector. Plus, there are also options for both high-res fix and upscaling. The SDXL LoRa is also supported, along with a variety of upscaling models, plus there are a variety of prompt inputs and also prompt styles to choose from. Of course, you'll need Comfy UI installed and running already, so if you haven't done that as yet, then do check out my previous video which covers the installation. If you've done a standard install of Comfy UI, installation of the new nodes is a simple case of running that git clone command there and then just restarting Comfy UI. So let's do that. There it is. We'll go there. So navigate to your Comfy UI custom nodes directory. Okay, we'll go into Comfy UI and then we'll go into custom nodes and then we'll run that git clone command. There it is. As you can see, I of course have already done that download, so it says it already exists. Then if you want to update, exactly like it says there, you can just run git pull. I have got some updates. There we go. So I am now running the very latest version. If, on the other hand, you're a Windows beginner where copying and pasting git clone commands isn't your cup of tea, then there is the alternative installation method. Here, you will instead need to have an understanding of downloading and unzipping files, as that's exactly what you'll need to do for this alternative method. There is a link there provided to a Civit AI page, and also here in the releases, you can see a link to the zip file you will need to download. Just as we did earlier with the git clone, you will need to drop that extracted directory into your Comfy UI custom nodes directory and restart Comfy UI. If you want to update this type of install, then just repeat that entire process again. So download the zip file, unzip it, and overwrite all the files in that existing directory. Like it says here, you will also need a number of files. If you haven't downloaded anything at all, then you'll need to download all of those. Chances are, of course, you already have the base, the refiner and the offset noise LoRa. When you're downloading those files, do ensure you save them into the correct directory, exactly like it says there for each of the files. With the installation and downloads complete, simply start your Comfy UI and load the latest workflow. Here we are, so I'm going to go to load, going to go across to where I've got it installed, which is there, Comfy UI in the custom nodes, and then across to the workflows. I'm going to load the latest one there, which is version 3.4. So there it is. If we scroll out a little bit here, you'll see just exactly how big and complex this is. There we go, it's absolutely huge, loads of things going on, but all the spaghetti is down here. It's all hidden away from you, and all you really need to look at is this section, User Interface. As you can see, it's got two very large preview windows there that you can look at if you zoom out a little bit, but for the most part, you just need to concentrate on this one little area here. Now, first up, you want to make sure your models are okay. This bit here, let's do a bit of a zoom in. Now, one of the things you'll probably have to change is the VAE model. By default, it's got a little hyphen in there, but if we just do a click refresh, we'll actually see it's called SDXL underscore VAE. So there's a tiny change on that from the file that you download by default. Next up, I'd suggest looking at these miscellaneous parameters up the top here. We've got a LoRa strength and operation mode where we've got text to image, image to image and in painting, and also the prompt style there. As you can see, there are plenty of options to choose for that one. As there are quite a lot of prompt styles, uh, they do each have a description over on the GitHub page there, so you can go through that and have a look, but I would basically suggest having a play yourself to get the hang of what each of them do. But here is a quick rundown. So there, simple, there, that's the first one there, simple. This is basically, as it says, the most simple one, and this just uses the main prompt and the negative prompt. If we scroll out a little bit here, just so we can see these. So there we've got the main prompt 
and the negative prompt. So those are just the two used in prompt style simple. Next up on the list there, we've got three prompts. That's very much like simple, but that also uses the secondary prompt as well. And this is quite similar to other SDXL workflows. If we go to subject focus there, the main and the secondary prompts are more important than the style prompt. And then we've got another one there, style focus, which is basically the opposite with the style prompts being more important. Next up, we've got weighted. Weighted allows a balance of the main and the secondary prompts, but also the style prompts. And on top of that, you can influence those with the style prompt power and negative style power up there as well. The next option there is overlay with overlay the main and secondary prompts compete with the style prompt which is quite a weird one the next one you've got there is subject style this one uses the main and secondary positives with the style negatives so that's that's quite a strange one and then you've got the opposite of that again style subject so that uses the style positives and the main and secondary negatives Further down the list, you have style only, just like it says, that uses the style and negative style prompts. And then finally, you've got weighted overlay and overlay weighted, the opposite of that. So weighted overlay is a mixture of both weighted and overlay, where the main and secondary prompts are weighted and the negative and negative style prompts are overlaid. And obviously overlay weighted is the opposite of that. So loads and loads of things in there. I suggest basically starting with simple and three prompts. So simple, we're just gonna be using the green box there and the red box there, or three simple prompts. You'll be using that green one, the sort of turquoisey one, and also the red one as well. Phew, yes, that is an absolute load of things, loads of styles, but perhaps the main thing to understand there is that not all of those prompt boxes are used all the time. It all depends on which prompt style you've got selected. So if you're getting something a bit weird happening, maybe you've got some prompts in there, not quite coming out how you'd expect, do check and make sure you've got the correct prompt style selected. If you're looking to generate larger than normal images, 1024 by 1024 is the default here. You've got a couple of options. You've got high res fixed parameters there. So by default, it is disabled. You can just select enabled on that, and that will give you a 1.5 factor upscale with a denoise of 0.25 and 25 high res fixed steps. Personally, I think those are pretty decent defaults, but obviously you can change anything you want to in there. The other option for making larger images, let's just disable that again for now, is down here. So here you've got off by default for performance reasons. So this will use the upscalers. So you just connect that one to there. There you go. And then you will get an upscale. If you don't want the upscaling, you can just click on that and delete. And then those two are disconnected again. The upscaling factor there is controlled in the advanced parameters by the upscale resolution factor, which by default is two. Finally, you've got the rest of the nodes, which are pretty common things. So you've got the, the generation parameters there, which you've got your image width and height, steps, guidance scale, sampler name, all that sort of stuff. The advanced parameters, you've got the base ratio. So how much of the base model are you going to use before you use the refiner? So there it's 80% base model and 20% refiner. Refiner strength and all sorts of other options you can change in there as well. Denoise perhaps being the most useful one and interesting one, should I say, as you'll need that when you're using image to image or in painting. Okay, so with the interface basics covered, it's time to put it all together and generate some images. For the first example here, I'm going to use text to image. I've got a simple prompt there and I'm gonna set the LoRa strength to 0.5. Got no high res fix for now and I have turned the upscaling off. In simple mode, just the main prompt there and the negative prompt there are used. So let's fix this up. I like to use English, so we'll just repair both of those quickly. And then the main prompt up there needs fixing too, as obviously we don't want to generate the enemy there. With that repaired, I can now cue the prompt and see what happens. Et voila, one rat in a hat. Okay, let's crank this up a notch now by switching to image to image. So there, operation mode, image to image. I'm also going to change the prompt style to three prompts as well. 
Just because I like bigger images, let's also enable high res fix. Now your source image is over here on the left. It's got that one by default. You can click that little box to choose a file to upload, but personally, I just like dragging and dropping them in. There we go, there I've got my image. Now, the other thing you'll need to do is change the image width and image height, unless you want that cropped. So let's just do that now. With image to image, the other thing to change is the denoise. I'm gonna put that up a little bit as well so that I have quite a significant change to my original image. With the three prompt style, you'll also want to use that secondary box as well. So let's change these up a little bit and fix my prompts. There we go. So now I've got my main prompt, my secondary prompt and an updated negative prompt. Let's cue that through and see what comes out. And there he is, our little rat in a flat cap. We can open him up as well. There we are. There he is in his full HD glory. That is 1.5 times upscaled. So as we can see there, that's 1728 by 1344 pixels. Awesome. So image to image works brilliantly there, which means it's time for the next mode. So there we go, operation mode. We're gonna change that to in painting. And now for in painting, obviously you're gonna need a mask as well, which is where this second box comes in handy. So we've dragged the same image in there. Now when you do a right click and open up in mask editor, there you get a much bigger version of the thing to fix. Okay, so let's do our little mask. We'll paint around the eyes there. And when you've done whatever masking you want to do, just click save to node. Again, you may want to change the denoise strength when you're doing in painting. All right, so I've also changed the prompt here as well, because obviously I'm just doing that area. So I want these as realistic human eyes because that would be perfectly normal. Okay, let's cue that prompt and see what happens. And there we go, we've got a lovely fresh set of eyes. If you want to see those as well in slightly larger preview versions, there they are. Don't forget those are above there as well. If you want, if you, if you fancy zooming out, personally, I like just dealing with that area there. So there you go, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Three different modes, lots of prompting options, high res fix, upscaling, all in a single compact interface with hardly any spaghetti. And if you thought that was fun, then why not check out this next Nerdy Rodent video?